Everybody wants to perform better on the bike. That's the reality of cycling. It's a super competitive sport. Whether you want to climb hills faster, ride along the flat faster, or simply beat your mates to a town sign, there's always something you can be doing to improve your cycling. And there's always one small upgrade that you can make to your bike that might give you that little competitive edge. In today's video, I'm gonna make one small upgrade to my bike that I think could be a game changer. I don't know for sure. I haven't had it installed yet. So I'm about to head off to the bike shop. I'll get it installed. I'll go for a ride and then we'll check back in and see just how good this upgrade actually is. Just a quick note on this, I am also going to get some new tires. As you can see, I've got the Pirelli P0s on my bike at the moment, but I'm going to get some American Classic Timekeeper tires installed on my bike. They do look a bit different, so the aesthetic of the bike is going to change, but that is not the upgrade. They were sent to me for free, but they didn't ask me to make a video or feature them in the video. I'm just mentioning them because they did send me the tires for free. And uh, yeah, let me go and get some tires installed, get this new upgrade installed go for a training ride and we'll check back in with you guys very, very shortly. So I've just come home from the bike shop. I've just had a few upgrades put on my bike. As you usually do when you go to the bike shop, you end up going, oh, I actually need this and this and this. So I had the bike fully degreased, cleaned and washed by Diedrich. I had my new American Classic tires put on. I ended up having a front 53 tooth chain ring put on as well because I've got some racing coming up. And the bike just goes that fast that I needed to upgrade from a 52 to a 53. So I've got the right amount of speed in those races. I had my other one upgrade that this video is about put on, which I'll tell you about soon. So it's about time to head out for a little ride, test this thing, and I'll chat to you guys from on the road. Alrighty, so I've just arrived down to the bottom of the climb where I'm doing my efforts today. The training session I'm doing today is a VO2 session. I'm doing three minutes on at VO2 max. So for me, it's about 360 watts. Your VO2 max is a zone in your training where you shouldn't really be able to sustain it for longer than about five to six, maybe eight minutes. So it's quite a high level of power. Today, I'm doing three minutes on, three minutes off, three minutes on, three minutes off, three minutes on, and then I have 15 minutes off and I do that two more times. So I have a total of three sets of nine nine minutes at VO2 max with only a short break in between. The reason I only have a short break in between is because I don't want my heart rate to come all the way back down to resting. I want to do each three minute effort in the set at a little bit higher heart rate and a bit higher heart rate. And what that means is my body's learning to push power without actually having the ability to draw on as much oxygen. This is a really good session to do in the lead up to a race. As I said before, I've got races coming up in the next few weeks. So this is why I'm doing this VO2 session. It's a super warm and sunny afternoon out here. So let's get this one done and I'll check to you guys soon. Alrighty, let's do this VO2 session coming up. One, let's get it done. So, if you're going to leave a comment down there, 
tell me don't buy upgrades, ride upgrades. This is my way of recommending you do both. <sighs> All right, training done, time to grab some water and head home. Alrighty, so back from my ride, as you can see, just done that training, bit of a hard little session there, but got through it about 110 Ks, about 1700 meters. If you wanna see the ride, it's on Strava. For the moment, let's jump into what the point of this video is, and this is to talk about the product that I was testing. Obviously, 110 kilometers is not a huge amount of testing to do, but we're gonna talk through it anyway, and I'm gonna tell you guys a bit about why I really rate the idea of this product more than probably the product itself, and it may be not for the reasons that you think. So without further ado, let's get into it today. I am discussing these, you might have guessed, Tubalito, if you've seen the little orange valve stem poking out of my wheels, or you saw them going in there when Diedrich was putting them in the bike. Tubalito is a brand that's been around for a few years. This video is absolutely not sponsored by them, other than the fact that a third party distributor sent me some Tubalito tubes, and I thought, you know what, this is an interesting product to discuss. My role as a content creator is to bring you guys maybe some ideas that you haven't thought about before, and ways that you can improve your cycling, and I really do think that these are a bit of a game changer product. There are three reasons behind why I think these are a game changer product. The first of which I'm going to say is the least scientific, and that is just the way that they feel inside your tires. The new tires could have made the difference, the tubes could have made the difference, but either way, I definitely felt a difference in the way the bike rode. It actually had quite a supple feel to it. Tubalitos are not a regular inner tube. They're not made out of butyl rubber, and they're not made out of latex. They're actually made out of an interesting kind of plastic compound, which uh, is super, super light, and I think that explains a bit of the ride feel as you saw in that ride I did about 1700 meters of climbing I was doing some really hard efforts uphill and the weight of the inner tubes was definitely noticeable how light are we talking well I chucked them on the scales earlier when I was getting the tires installed and one tubalito the road tube it says on the packaging here that it's 24 grams I put it on the scales at the service course and it was actually 21 grams for an inner tube which as you can see I did a comparison with a regular continental race inner tube which came out at a 100 plus grams, that means that each of these Tubalito tubes is five times lighter than a regular road tube, which actually has some big implications for reasons that I'm gonna speak about in a moment. But for this reason one, I just wanna stick with the idea of the ride quality for a moment. So as I said, the tubes are really, really light. That's a big part of it. It's less rotational weight in the tires means that it just requires less effort to push the bike up a hill. We all strive to have slightly lighter bikes, whether that be through a set of handlebars made out of carbon instead of alloy, a different seat post. People spend thousands of dollars upgrading their wheel set to shave off a few grams. And so to have an inner tube, which weighs five times lighter than a regular inner tube is actually quite exceptional. And so that's projected through the way the bike rides. Again, I need to mention the fact that this is a hugely unscientific review, but I did notice that the ride was super, super supple. And I feel like as someone who's not very scientific, but has ridden a lot of tires, I've never noticed that much of a stark contrast going from one tire to another tire. So I definitely think that the tubes had something to do with it. So ride quality is definitely a big part of what I like about these tubes. The second one I want to mention is the price. Now these are actually the world's most expensive tubes as far as I can find. They're about 30 euros a pop, so they're pretty expensive per tube. However, I want to make a point about this because it's interesting, people spend a lot of money on their bikes and they spend a lot of money upgrading parts on their bikes. You might spend 300 bucks to get a new set of handlebars to shave off 50 grams. You might get a crank set that costs you 500 euros to shave off a couple of hundred grams. If you can say 60 to 80 grams per tube that's 120 grams across a wheel set for about 60 bucks so while you might be thinking it's insane to spend 30 euros per tube when you can get regular tubes down at the shop for about 10 bucks the reality is if you're looking for performance gains for 60 euros you can actually have a huge amount so that leads to me to my next point and I think this is the most important point of this video and this is the reason that I wanted to make this video and that is the fact that I think these things are a game changer in terms of spares they may be prone to punctures on regular riding. I don't know. I've only done 110 Ks on them. I had no issues and I even did a little bit of gravel and had no problems there. But I can understand that most people are probably sitting there thinking, wow, I'm really skeptical about these things given they only weigh 
pretty much nothing. One thing I would say is as spares, they make an even bigger difference. Because if you're like me and you carry two inner tubes in your saddlebag and you've got two inner tubes inside your tires, that's potentially about 400 grams worth of ballast in your bike. If you can reduce each of those down to 20 grams and save yourself upwards of 300 grams across your entire bike, you're actually saving a whole heap of weight for not a whole lot of money. So the reason that this excites me is because when we're talking long distance cycling, we're talking bike packing, we're talking places where weight is actually quite important. I think the Tubalito tubes can make a difference. If you're going bike packing and you've got a gravel bike and you've got two spare gravel tubes in there, you're looking at probably 300 grams in your saddlebag. If you can cut down the size and the weight of the tubes by 80%, you're saving a whole heap of weight, you're saving a whole heap of space, and uh, it'll make your entire journey that much more enjoyable. The other thing with the size of the tubes is that if you want to carry lots of them, you're not burdening yourself. In the same size that you can carry one regular tube, you can probably carry about three or four Tubalito tubes, and you're still under the weight of that one regular tube that you've got in your saddlebag. And then if you're talking gravel or mountain bike tires, the difference is absolutely massive. I've got one of the gravel tires here. I haven't actually installed it because I run tubeless in the gravel bike, so I'm hoping not to need it. But as a spare, this thing weighs 36 grams. You're looking at saving 100 plus grams per tube that's in your saddlebag, plus the size of that. So calculate that across multiple days of riding if you're bikepacking, multiple climbs if you're on the road, and you end up with a bike that weighs a fair bit less and is most likely gonna be a fair bit more enjoyable to ride. So one final thing to mention about the Tubalito tubes is the fact that you can buy a little puncture repair kit like this. The puncture repair kit has a whole bunch of patches in it, so you can actually get eight to 10 uses out of your Tubalito, which means that the price comes right down per tube. I can't comment on the puncture resistance versus latex or regular tubes. One thing I will say is that I've watched a bunch of reviews online and some guys have zero issues with punctures at all and they even say they're stronger than regular tubes. If you live on really rough roads, say in the UK or maybe in Outback Australia, you might find that they're a little bit prone to punctures, but again, you can get a repair kit. So anyway, that's the end of this video. If you got something out of it, definitely let me know. I haven't done many product reviews, but I'm happy to do more. If you run Tubalitos, drop a comment down below so I know I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you haven't run Tubalitos, definitely something to consider if you're looking to shave some weight off your bike for not very much money. Thank you again for watching and I hope you've enjoyed. Chuck a like on there and a subscribe and I'll see you guys all in the next episode very, very soon. All right, adieu.